Today we're going to continue our endeavor to make the Fairmont go eights with a stock Battleman 4200. saying, why is the stock intake back on the car? Well, all of the fancy tubing and stuff that we made for the car, well, it turns out we were just using this car for mock-up, and we plan to use that on a future project that you will see very soon. So, we are putting the old turbo setup back on the car, and we are sticking a larger turbo onto the car. We previously had a Precision 5976E turbo, and we are sticking a 7875 on. Right now, Dad is working on getting a wastegate onto the turbine housing, and I am working on the wiring. So I wanted to briefly go over uh, my process for making a wiring harness. So, sitting on the fender here, I have a whole bunch of uh, printouts from my label maker of all of the components of the wiring harness. On the left here I have inputs and on the right I have outputs. So typically what I do is I take the factory wiring harness and I cut all of the insulation off the uh, ends of it and then get the wires uh, traced back as far as I can go to keep as much of the wire as I can and then cut them. And then I lay them on the car like this and typically what I'll do is you know, say this is the TPS wire. I lay this back and then I take my label maker and I put a tag on my wires so that I know which wires they are and then I will loom the entire harness up until the point where it splices into the uh, pigtail from the uh, ECU that I'm working with. In this case, we're going with a mega squirt. So there, I put my little tag on there. And then I can put it back here. In this case, we're working with a mega squirt. So the basics of how automotive electronics work is uh, some sensors are powered, some sensors are not powered, some sensors generate their own voltage, uh, some sensors you need like a pull-up resistor or something like that. Um, and you know, you just have to look up the specification of your sensor that you're using and give it the appropriate things. So for example, uh, my TPS here, it is just a potentiometer and you give it a 5 volt, you give it a ground, and then it generates its own voltage. Other sensors like your uh, crank position sensor, you give it a 5 volt power, a ground, um, and then it, it basically provides a ground whenever it sees uh, metal waved in front of it and then you need to put a pull-up resistor. That's, that's just how this particular crank sensor works. Some of them, uh, like a mag pickup or a variable reluctor type sensor, they generate their own voltage. Um, some ECUs have an internal pull-up resistor. Some of them you have to add. You know, like the, micro, the Mega Squirt has an internal pull-up resistor, a Micro Squirt does not, so you have to add it. Um, additionally, your outputs, so like, let's take a coil for example. So some coils, they provide, uh, you have to supply them with a power, a ground, some of them you have to give a sensor ground. These coils are more simple, you literally just give them power, ground, and then there's a trigger wire which provides a 5 volt signal that tells the coil when to charge and discharge. Some uh, ECUs you have to add like a pull up resistor to that particular output depending on how the output is set up. Uh, the mega squirt already has all that figured out for you. A micro squirt you need to add pull up resistors. I mean that's pretty much the basics. In general most outputs like VVT, for example, 
you basically, you supply it with a constant positive supply on one of the wires and it, it doesn't matter which one, you can use either one. And then the ECU will ground the other wire when it activates it. That's the same thing with like a fuel injector. You can't wire them backwards, it's a solenoid, it's just like a nitrous solenoid or anything else. You give it a constant uh, fused power supply and then it grounds the other side of the injector and that's how it turns it on and off. So it's, it's a bunch of wires. They're all very simple systems um, and you just have to route them all to where the computer can get to them and manipulate them in the way that you want them to. Um, you just have to look up the, the data or you know read forums. Uh, you know it's it's if you're doing something more uh, one-off like a Mitsubishi or something you know there may not be as much good information out there but if you're working with like GMs and stuff like that most of the information is very easy to find and you know most standalone systems use GM sensors so it's very easy to find information um, so I typically you know if I have a chance to use a GM sensor, I use a GM sensor. So I'm going to get to work on labeling all of these wires, tracing them back from where they came, and then I can loom the thing and we'll get it wired up. So let's get to work. guys so we kind of got busy there and forgot to record some stuff but I'm gonna briefly go over all of the things that we did if you guys remember the fuel cell was mounted in the front of the car when we originally did the build on this car so we have relocated that to the back we redid the entire fuel system uh, you'll also remember that we had a 300 liter per hour uh, fuel pump mounted here in the front and a super short fuel line. Now we have an in-tank uh, Walbro 450 so that should give us a little bit more fuel flow capacity. Also I put some Snake Eater 1500 cc injectors in and like mentioned earlier we are sticking a 7875 on the car. Also we have installed a water-to-air intercooler. This is the first time that we have ever run a water-to-air intercooler and with that we needed to install an ice tank and a uh, intercooler pump in order to make that whole system work. We decided to install the ice tank in the cabin of the vehicle and up high so that the intercooler pump would have some head pressure and help it to pump a little bit more. Cameron did some calculations on that and found that by increasing the height of the ice tank, we would basically get more coolant flow 
and provide more cooling to the intercooler and thus make more horsepower. I think he, in total, he calculated it would amount to about 9 horsepower. So the car is 100% assembled. Uh, I finished my wiring harness. The gold box is installed. We have a plethora of sensors installed. We have a uh, discharge, compressor discharge temperature sensor. We have water temperatures in and out on the intercooler. And fuel pressure, oil pressure, you know, all the, all the important stuff installed on the car. It's running sequential fire. So it's like 100% ready to go to the dyno. I guess I'll start it up for you real quick and you can listen to it. Um, this is by no means the first start, so here we go. soon you'll see this car on the dyno. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.